went from Cody Rhodes, which he, he had a great run with, to a new trainer, Trainer of the Year, you know, 2011. Is there any danger with this fight? Because you're, you're transitioning from different coaching styles. I mean, we virtually have a coach, get me. He makes a fight on the stand of what you need to do. Um, with what he's making me understand is my boxing skills are better than going in there and trying to knock on someone else. Knock on someone, knock on someone else. Why well, try too hard and make mistakes when you can win fights instantly and easily by using your brains? I mean, one mistake I've been making is fighting my heart too much. You know, uh, like Oscar said, even if I fought with half of my heart, you know, I'd be, I'd be a very, ex very exciting fighter. So I need to start using my brain more and um, picking the shots right and you know, do things what I still part of me I can't because um, I do make a lot of mistakes when I rush and when I uh, use my heart too much. So. Has, he, has, yeah, has he noticed that in your yeah. fights or with sparring no, sessions? He's noticed that in, in, hey, in fights and in sparring. He says to me, I'm too, I'm too ahead of myself when I'm in training, so I need to be you know, slow myself down, be patient a little bit, you know, think about and uh, see things better. And, it, and it's making me understand now, you know, we've been working on that for the last two or three weeks, and it's making me understand now that, you know what, I was rushing too much. Maybe if I slowed a few things down, it would have been much easier. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just all about, and it's also living, how, how you live outside the boxing ring. It's not all about how you train, it's about the outside, you know, being, you know, having enough rest, Focusing, um, not doing anything silly or not getting distracted or by anything. So Virgil can be a big help on that as well, you know. Whereas really my old trainer never really cared. What are the biggest things? Do you think if you were to slow down a little bit and fought a little bit more in your last two fights, you would have won those fights? Tell us about your last two fights and how uh, you know how they made you uh, transition to Virgil Hunter and what you know. I mean, I, you know, looking at the fights now, I wouldn't really taught how to, how, what mistakes I was making. I was just being taught uh, stuff how to beat opponents. That's it. I wasn't taught how to what mistakes I was making. The version is he's teaching me what mistakes I need to improve on, what I need to work on, how to improve myself, and uh, what's going to make me a better fighter. And that's what I've been working on. So you know, slowing the feet down a little bit, using using the hand defenses. You know, um, you know, not rushing, uh, making mistakes, and just taking my time. It's a 12 round fight, it's not a 1 round fight, because I I used to go in there and think, okay, I'm going to knock this guy out, but no, it's a, it's a 12 round fight, you take your time, you pick the right shot, the same. How do you feel about you know, coming, stepping back into the ring and tell me a little bit about uh, uh, Carlos Molina, what he brings to the ring? Uh, Carlos Molina, you know, he's unbeaten, I think he's, he's, he's a perfect fighter for this stage. And um, I think it's a fight that I need to definitely win to be where I need to be again. And to not only win, but you know, get through this fight, get my confidence back, and then hopefully um, go on uh, and, and fight, the, fight, fight the likes of uh, Garcia again. Hopefully, I want to rematch. Or maybe maybe one day, if decent clean, then maybe that fight would happen. But like I said, I know the last two fights I should have won, I made a mistake because maybe I'm looking past them too much. And um, you know, things happen for a reason. Maybe it's happened for the best. Where I had to move and leave Freddie and go with Virgil. Uh, I believe you know things happen for a reason. And there's always there's always a you know a bright light on the other side. Was that hard to do? Was it difficult for you on a personal level to say, okay, I'm I'm out, I'm, I'm moving on? Is yeah, that... I called Freddie myself. I yeah. called myself and I said, look, Freddie, uh, I'm gonna make a change. And. Uh, not many people will do that, but I'm the one who called him and said, I'm going to leave uh, and I'm going to move to Virgil on her. And he wished me all the best, I'd be left to do that. Whatever's been said after that, I mean, I'm not going to be got involved in for I know the truth. Uh, you know, and I'm the, I'm the one who called Freddie myself. I'd love to fight for Bradley because it's a fight that I offered him, I offered to him uh, when I was the IBF and the WBA champion. And he was the BC champion and the eighth and uh, the WBO champion. He turned it down and then I offered it up to them again. Still turned it down. I don't think it, I don't know, maybe in the future that fight can happen. Um, I'm just going to 
get this fight out of the way first before I looking too, too ahead. I made that mistake before looking too far ahead. You know, made mistakes. Yeah, I, I, I made, yeah, I put my hand up and run. Maybe looking too far ahead. So there was time where I need to take every fight step at a time. And, you know, take it slow. Uh, Bill, what was it like uh, stepping into this brand new gym in San Francisco? Was there anything different? Did very different. Preach? Yeah, very different. I mean, I remember walking in so quiet. You get time to think. You get time to think what you need to do and you know what you're there for, the purpose you're there for. You're not, you're not afraid or you're not where are your people sat there watching you or seeing faces that you don't know. It's a very tight community in that gym and you need to have people there who you trust. And with Virgil keeps it very limited to people. And that's what I like about it. I think uh, keeping it limited uh, bring the best out of a fighter. Because you're not bothered about who's watching. You're not, you're not thinking about, you're not fighting for the crowd, you're not fighting for the people watching for your fans. You're doing it for yourself. And you're doing what your trainer tells you to do. Some things that you might tell you might be stupid, you might feel stupid doing, but you have to improve them. And to improve them is by practicing them more and more. And you might feel good doing them if there's people watching. So that's why I, I, I prefer any gym like kids where it's quiet, isolated, and chill.